Okay guys, so I'm going to give you some price targets for Bitcoin uh, if, if we push up or if we drop. I'm going to show you, um, so we have a new daily and uh, weekly candle open that's going to take place in about 5 hours and 19 minutes. And what I'm trying to show you, now the daily, it, it looks like it could go either way. You can see the moving average, it looks like it could go down, it could go up. Uh, you can see the RSI, we did get across. That could mean we could start coming down at least to this support trend line here. You can see that this... Uh, RSI rejected, rejected, rejected. We pushed above it, dropped. We got rejected. Now we're above it. So it could come back down, test the support, and push back up. We'll have to see. My point is, on the daily, it's kind of hard to tell what's going to happen. But on the weekly, I think it's a lot more clear. And these are the price targets you need to pay attention to if we push up or if we drop. So we're going to cover this on the weekly as well. Before we get into that, uh, I'll put a, this is a video I put out on September 24th. I'll put a link up this video now if you want to check it out. I'll have a link pinned to the first comment in the description. But on this notice right here, we found support, we found support, and it said if we pushed up, the next point to get rejected is around 43,257. Well, if you'll notice on this chart, and again, I have this rewound back, I'll show you why I made a tweet. And, and again, I'm trying to show you how to play these moving averages to get an idea of how to play these charts using the MACD and RSI. But again, I showed you, you know, this was your resistance, 43,257, notice we pushed up. I have this red line outlining this green line here. So this, this is where we found support, you know, back here. We found support again, that's where I told you to buy in. And if we pushed up, this is the point to get rejected, 43,280. That's how it played out, we got rejected. Uh, this, so the reason I have price realm back here, this is before the next daily candle open. Notice the Bollinger Band's coming down, this one's pushing up, it's getting squeezed together. Plus we had a next daily candle open, so I expect to potentially get a move. I made a tweet, uh, my Twitter's private, you have to subscribe to my charts to get access to my Twitter. Uh, 19 hours ago, I said, heads up, Bollinger Band on H1 are getting pretty close together. Uh, and next daily candle open is in, is in 34 minutes. Look at the MACD and RSI to get an idea of direction. C1 looks like we could have some upside on the 3 hour, however the H1 looks like we could have some downside on the 2 hour. So let me show you both these charts why I was saying this. So. If you'll notice right here, so the reason I was saying it could possibly be downside on the um, the two hour, which is the H1 chart. If you notice, we were already we were already pushing up, right? With you see the green bars are going up, so it looked like it could be topping out. It looked like the um, the RSI, you know, could start angling back down. Not not to mention the we were way overextended with the um, the RSI right here. So you got your moving averages on the MACD, you got these blue bars that look like they were topped out, and we, since we are overextended with RSI, it looked like potentially we could have a drop. However, on the C1 chart, which I have rewound back as all, uh, also, you can see right here, let me find my arrow tool, it looked like we had some more upside. Notice that the, uh, the RSI was, it was, it was a little lower than the center, it was pushing up, and it looked like the moving averages uh, were crossing to the upside, right? So it looked like on the three hour, plus you can see that you notice when, when we cross, when we come up from red, it turns to blue. This is bullish. So it looked like the same thing could be playing out right here, that this would start pushing up. So I was saying on the three hour, it looked like we could have some upside, but on the two hour, it looked like we could have some downside. In other words, it looked like since we were overextended with the RSI, that we would potentially start coming down right here. And it looks like this would start coming down, and this would start coming down as well. That's why I said it's possible we could have some downside here. And you notice when you have your RSI, you know, you know, way overextended, and you have your moving averages way overextended, you know, that's when you get these these big dumps like we got right here. So again, that's that's why I was trying to say on the two hour it looked bearish, but on the three hour it looked bullish. And if you'll notice how it played out right here, this was uh, seven hours ago. When the next candle, the next daily candle opened, we had a drop down to support where we'd already tested twice, and then we pushed up to resistance. Notice the C1 chart, perfect resistance right here. That's what I say if you're doing swing trading, always have the H1 and the C1 chart open. H1 is for smaller targets, C1 is for larger targets. So let me play this out to where current price action is. Let me get rid of all of this real quick. So let me play this out to where price currently is. So that's how it played out um, after that tweet I made. Let me go ahead and play this one out. This is the C1 chart. And, and again, take note, um, this resistance level up here at 48,200 and the support level at 38,900. These are key resistance and support levels we could test potentially in the next, uh, in, in, about, in about five hours or less. I'm going to play this out. 
So you can see we came up and we found perfect resistance here. So here's what I'm saying. Right here on the three hour, uh, you, you can see the RSI is way, way overextended, right? So it looks like on, on the three hour, we could find some, some resistance possibly come down. The, the MACD looks like it could angle up more, but it looks like it's, it's about to top out to come down, right? Looks like it, it's about to curve down. But again, just going by the RSI, it looks like overextended. It's kind of hard to tell with the MACD. But this is a resistance level we are respecting right now, this, this red trend line. Notice we got resistance here, resistance, resistance, resistance. So look, if we break above this point, you know, we get above 43,833, this is your next major resistance level, 48,200. I'm going to show you another chart that shows 48,200 and 39,000, I'm sorry, 38,900 as support. So these major support resistance levels pay attention to. So let's go back to this daily. So again, it's, it's kind of hard to tell what's going to happen here. Uh, but but you can see on this chart, 48,200, 48,200. We've been respecting this FIB circle very well right here, this white FIB circle. Notice we got resistance, right? Resistance, 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 flipped that support. Then it became resistance, resistance, and we had a drop. So if we push up, again, 48,200 completely matches this target up here at 48,200. And if we drop, uh, I've showed you before, this is a very key support level. This is, we, we held almost perfect support here. Support, 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 more support, support, support. Then it became resistance. Resistance, we found support and we push up from this point. So that is a key support level. This goes back since the beginning of Bitcoin. So if we drop a support level to watch, it's right here around 38,300. And again, when I say, you know, look at multiple charts, there's a lot of confluence. So if we drop 38,900 to potentially 38,300, and again, as I said, the daily isn't very clear which way we're going to go. But if you look at the weekly, it looks very clear to me which way we're headed. Um, you can see right here, you can see the MACD was, the moving average of the MACD were way up here. This was uh, around uh, May. This is May 3rd. And you can see what's, what's, what's weird about this, though, is the, the RSI was way down here. It was, I mean, at this lowest point. But we still had a drop of around of over 54 percent now right now you can see the RSI is already angling down right we're already coming down with the RSI and you can see the MACD looks like it's about to cross the moving average is about to cross and you can see these blocks that are getting uh, went from dark green to light green so it looks like this is about to angle down as well so on the uh, weekly it looks bearish by the way guys if you access to the charts the name of this chart is actually bitstamp weekly moving averages 300 200 100 and, and this is what I'm saying. If, if for some reason the stock market just you know shoots straight up, this is the point you'll get rejected. This is the same ring we got rejected here. So if we push up, this would be a top. If we drop, this is a likely point to catch support. And as I mentioned in that previous video, this is a 200 week moving average and a 300 weekly moving average. So if we had, had a major drop, these are the two points I'll be buying. But again, I just want to show you that the next uh, weekly candle open looks bearish while the daily it's kind of hard to tell. But these are the points to watch. If we push up, you know, your first resistance to watch will be this trend line here. You know, it's just from this, these two points where we got, you see right here, resistance, resistance. So if we come up, this is the next point to watch. And you have the 200, I think this is the, this is the 200 daily moving average. So this is a resistance level to watch as well. We're in right here around uh, 45,330. And then we have this next ring below that is right here at around, this is around 39,000. Let's just say close to 40,000. But again, I would pay attention to 48,200 if we push up, 38,315 if we drop. Now guys, keep in mind, I'm expecting a major move in October through November for the, for the uh, stock market. Uh, this is the chart right here. Uh, now guys, if you watch that uh, two videos back, I told you we found support right here. And when we found support on the Dow Jones and started pushing up, I was watching in real time as uh, Bitcoin started pushing up. Bitcoin started pushing up as the markets were pushing up. And it is very possible, uh, you know, according, and this is another example, guys. I'm going I'm to show you the Dow Jones. This is, this is on the daily. I'm going to show you on the monthly. So right here, it looks like the Dow Jones could have some upside. You can see we're already shooting straight up with the RSI, right? Indicating more upside. You can see that we're about to get across on the moving averages for the MACD. 
and you can see the um, the blocks are starting to push up, possibly to turn green. Now I'm counting on this. Now we possibly could have a little downside and then push up, but I will be shorting. When we make contact with this ring right up here, this area, even if it's out here, this is where I'll be shorting the Dow Jones, the S&P, the NASDAQ. I know that when we hit this point, and, and it has to come up to this point because I want to get the highest point to short. When we make contact up here, I expect us to have a lot of downside. So I will be putting in my short when we make contact. By the way, this chart is available under my stock section. So just to show you, it is possible to have some upside. So pay attention when markets open uh, tomorrow. If you start seeing the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ to start pushing up, chances are Bitcoin is going to push up with it because Bitcoin typically follows the markets. Wall Street is tied into Bitcoin. Now, if you start seeing the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ start crashing and the dollar start pushing up, then you know you want to be short on Bitcoin. But I'm just showing you it looks like there's some upside, uh, at least on the daily, for the uh, Dow Jones. But if you go to the weekly, I mean the monthly, <laughs> look, at, look at where the, the RSI is. The RSI is way overextended, right? And you can see it's already it's already crossed to potentially come down, right? Looks like it's ready to start angling down. The the uh, moving averages on the MACD and they've already leveled off. Looks like this right here could potentially start angling down, right? You can see that the 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 blocks here, the dark green, and now it's going down. So it looks like this is starting to come down as well. And it just so happens this is happening at the point I'm seeing that we're going to have a potential uh, large correction for the for the Dow. Maybe it's a black swan event. We all know what's going on with China right now. I went to the store to go buy a couch. They told me it was going to be it was going to be eight to sixteen weeks before the couch was delivered. I said, forget it, and walked out the door. I'm not waiting you know, 16, 18 weeks to get a couch. So there's a supply and demand issue. There's a transportation issue. Things are really bad. I think the point where things are going to get really bad is going to be in October through November. I've showed you this, this in previous videos. Every time we hit one of these rings, these green rings, we get rejected at least 11%. Notice where the MACD was. Uh, the, the MACD was up here, but you can see where the RSI was. It was way overextended. We didn't have that much of a correction, but we did have a correction. Uh, back here, you can see this when we had our COVID crash. We were way overextended with the RSI. And the MACD wasn't that overextended, but we still had a drop. So it's just, it's not a coincidence to me that we're hitting this next green ring. RSI is, the RSI is way overextended, angling, angling down. The MACD moving averages are about to, to start angling down. You can see the this right here is already starting to angle down. So to me, just because we're, we're at this point right here, I think this is where we have a major correction. And guys, we already saw what happened back here. When the Dow corrected around 37%, Bitcoin dropped uh, around 68%. So if things get bad right here, I'm telling you, these other YouTubers say I'm going 100,000, 200,000. If the stock market has a major correction, I don't see why Bitcoin would not correct as well. That is what happened here. I think the same thing is going to happen right here. So pay attention to that, guys. I'm just showing you on the monthly. It looks like we have we're way overextended, way topped out for the um, for the Dow Jones. So I'm expecting a lot of downside, and if that happens, we can have a lot of downside for Bitcoin. Let me give you some price targets to pay attention to currently. So you can see we're still getting rejected at this resistance level right here. So this is your, your resistance we need to get above. Your next resistance level to watch is going to be right here at around 44,743 to potentially 45,299. Your next support level below is down here at 42,218. And we know this is a key support level at 41,000. If that breaks, we're going much lower. We've already tested it one. Let me get my, hold on. Didn't want that. We've already tested it once, twice, thrice. So if this breaks, we're coming down much lower. And again, if if we push up, I would watch 48,200 to get rejected. If we drop down, watch the posh because the bounce around 48,900. And that is on par with, what? so 38,300 to 38,900 would be a point too long. And I do expect on the short time frame, we have some upside for the Dow. But overall, I think the Dow is going to have a major correction come October. And make sure you watch this video, guys. I go into more detail about what I'm expecting. Uh, this video I put out on September 23rd. I'll put a link up to this now. And um, it'll, the link will be in the description as well. Well, that's it, guys. Till the next video, trade safe, trade smart. I'm out. Peace.